Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I do hope you are staying safe and healthy out there. And for those of you that are new here, I am Jim. Nice to meet you. Thanks for tuning in. I make videos about editing your photos using different software products. Today I am in Luminar 4 and I'm having a lot of fun. I was actually doing a Skype one-on-one -on -one session with a, uh, with a person and uh, we were going through his images and one of his questions was about layers, how they work in Luminar and that sort of thing. And um, I went through an example photo of how I use layers, or at least a, a couple of examples of how I use layers. And I thought it would make a good video because I get a number of questions from people that say, hey Jim, I don't see you using layers a lot. And how do you use layers and why and when and that sort of thing. So I thought I would uh, do this photo or use this photo as an example of um, how I use layers. This isn't all the ways that I use layers, but it's a good sample uh, to give you some ideas about how layers work and what you can do with them. So let me show you the photo. Here it is, base photo, and I've used this photo in previous videos. It just happened to be in my folder that uh, I was editing with this gentleman, and we kind of walked through it. So that's the base photo, and this is the final photo. Now, I will admit, the final photo is a bit over the top color-wise. This is really less about the color and more so about what the layers allowed me to do to the image and how it allowed me to control it. The final result can be tailored, uh, but it's I'm really here I'm talking about the layers. So I'm gonna reset these layers and all the different tools and things that I used on the layers, and then we'll jump into it. Okay, here we are, base layer, and there's the base photo unedited. I did start in the light tool, and this is something I generally do before I'll jump into using layers and doing customized edits, and that is I'll start with the light tool and maybe AI enhance, it depends on the image. Um, I may do a video about that as well. If you'd like to see videos about the light tool and AI Enhance and how I use them, by all means, leave me a comment or give me a thumbs up. Um, here you can see a little bit of temperature and tint, a little bit of smart contrast, took down the highlights, lifted the shadows. I didn't do anything in advanced settings. Very simple. There's the base photo, and there it is. Really not very much. It's very simple. But then I went over to AI Enhance, and as you can see here, I bumped up AI Accent. 33 and AI Sky Enhancer 23. They give you a, a nice pop. There's the before and there's the after. The AI tools in Luminar are really just honestly amazing. They, I think they do a great job. Um, I think some people that are purists that might, you know, they might think that I don't want to use an AI tool. I want to control everything myself, but I'm not above using simple stuff uh, like a slider that does a lot for me. I'm a big fan because all it does is make my job easier to more rapidly or more quickly get to my final results. So I love it. I use AI Accent all the time. I use AI Sky Enhancer some, but on this image I definitely used it. And you can see the blue in the sky is a little bit lighter, and the AI Sky Enhancer really helped bring that out along with AI Accent. So that's really it for my base layer. The next thing I did is added a new adjustment layer. So all you do is you just click on plus and add new adjustment layer right there, and then you add that. I know I've already done that, so I'm gonna pop over here. Now, this is gonna pre-populate with a bunch of stuff, and that's because I used a look, and that's one way I use a layer, is I'll do some edits on the base layer, light tool, AI accent, that sort of thing. Um, but then if I wanna experiment with a look, I'll do that on an adjustment layer. And that's one of the first ways I use layers, and that's because if you stick that preset or look on the base layer that you've already edited, it's gonna replace everything you've done. It, when you add a look to a layer, it wipes out whatever was there because it says, you're kind of telling it, put this look on this layer. And so it wipes out stuff that's already there. So I've had people leave comments that say, hey, I made all these edits and then I stuck a, a preset or a look on it and it wiped everything out. It does, that's exactly what it does. So just add presets or looks on an adjustment layer. I did that, I just went into a looks pack, I went into my London Calling, and I grabbed this one called Bodium Castle and stuck it on now. I stuck it on and it defaults to 100 uh, in terms of adjustment amount. And as you can see at 100, it's really saturated. I kind of like it, to be honest. I just like colors and vibrant photos, but it is overdone, right? So what I did is I came down to about 50 or so, and that's a great way to experiment with looks and layers is add that adjustment layer, stick a look on it, and then uh, edit the adjustment amount to see how that looks because at 100, it's, it's basically overcooked. At 50, that looks pretty reasonable. In fact, that probably looks a bit like what I saw with, with you know with the naked eye, so to speak. So um, 
No change to blend mode, no mask. I just stuck the preset uh, or look on the layer and just reduced the uh, adjustment amount. That preset includes light enhancements, AI enhanced color. In Pro, it has color enhancer. And then it also has some stuff in the deprecated uh, tab, which only shows up if you're using a preset or look from a previous version like Luminar 3 which is where I built my London Calling preset pack, but it still works fine in Luminar 4. It just has two uh, sliders or filters or tools, tone and clarity, that no longer exist in 4, so they show up on the deprecated tab, which basically means um, these aren't in the current version, so that we're gonna stick them on this tab that only shows up when filters from previous versions are used. Okay, and so the next thing is, um, what I wanted to do is I like the, the warm light coming across the, gla uh, the top of the grass. So that would be, you know, here on this grass, kind of here along this grass, and a little bit on the beach, and then this grass that's coming down here kind of on the right uh, corner, kind of diagonally. I like that warm glow, and I kind of want to pop that, and so that's another thing I do with layers. I isolate sections of the photo, and that's exactly what I did on this next layer. Now what I did here is I created the layer, and I knew I wanted to isolate just that area, so I went into Edit Mask, and I went into Brush, and this is a layer mask. So what that means is I, I masked in or painted in uh, just the section I want to adjust, which is the top of the grasses, right? I painted that in, but I did it on the layer, so that means that every single tool or filter that I apply on this layer is only going to apply in that area that I've masked, in that area that was red a moment ago, and that's because it's a layer mask. And so that's a great way if you're going to use a bunch of filters to adjust a specific area, go create the mask for that specific area on the layer, and then use any tool you want, and every tool that you use is only going to apply where the mask is on that layer. So it's a time saver. In other words, because if not, if you're using a filter mask or a tool mask, you're going to have to same, create that same mask every single time or copy and paste. It's just easier to create a layer mask and then go use anything you want in that specific area. So I'm on this adjustment layer. Again, I'm isolated to the top of the grass. First thing I wanted to do is give it a little bit of structure, and that's just going to give it a little bit of crunch. And then I went down to Detail Enhancer and popped that a little bit as well. So basically, all I'm doing is great creating a little bit of crunch and detail in the grasses because, again, I'm on a layer mask. And so I've painted in, for that layer, any adjustments to only occur where I've painted, which is in the grass. So um, AI Structure and Details Enhancer. But as I said, the thing I wanted to do is really pop the warmth there. Now, one way to do that would be go, go to Landscape Enhancer, and I could just hit it with Golden Hour. And that's kind of adding some, as you can see, but that's not actually what I did there. I went into Pro and I went into Color Enhancer. And honestly, all I did is just kind of start moving these sliders around. Again, this was a one-on-one -on -one session um, with a client. And so I was just kind of experimenting. I didn't really have a particular look in mind other than I wanted to pop the color. So I did it all. It was kind of garish, a kind of over the top, but I bumped up the brilliance and warmth. I added color contrast. This is a great tool. It, because I selected something kind of in the blue realm, what that does is it takes the, it makes the blue brighter and it makes the opposite to blue kind of darker. So I'm kind of darkening the gold, which is kind of what I'm going for, a richer, warmer look. I added some split color warmth, and I don't think I did anything down here. No, I didn't use any of the color balance. But basically, Color Enhancer, if you look just at the top of the grasses, I went from that a little bit more muted to that, where it's a little bit richer and warmer, and that's what Color Enhancer did, plus what I did on the Essentials tab for structure and details. Um, I'm just popping the grass, and again, it's all isolated in that area because every one of these filters or tools is applying here to the area that I masked it in. Now, there's one more thing you're gonna notice, and that is the adjustment amount. Because those color adjustments that I did on that color enhancer tool in the pro tab were pretty garish they were at a hundred it looked like that so it was over the top and I was doing it for a visual example in my one-on-one -on -one session to kind of show this is how a mask works on a layer so it looked terrible but when I started pulling that down and I can't remember what it was but let's say I was at about 25 at 25 it looks pretty nice so keep that in mind you can do a lot of crazy adjustments to color and things like that on a layer, but then if you come pull the adjustments amount down on that layer, you may end up with something you like, and I kind of liked it here. So 
There's the before this layer. Again, just applying to the grasses because that's what I've painted this layer in to include. And after, there you go. Pop some detail, structure, and color. Took down the adjustment amount so it's not over the top. Now that reduces the color impact, but because I'm on a layer mask, that's also reducing the detail and structure impact. So even though I've got them on here at 52 or whatever for detail enhancer, because this layer is reduced to 25%, it's it's basically 25% of that 52. So I could go to a, you know basically 100 on these and get a little bit more of them, and that would be more like let me get to 100 on all three. That would be more like uh, 100 on detail across that section. But because that layer is reduced adjustment about to 25, it's kind of like doing a 25 without a mask. I hope that makes sense. Simple math problem. But um, you can see, even though I was at 50 on each of these sliders and went to 100, the amount of detail showing here is not over the top. And again, that's because this layer is at 25. If I move this back up to 100, there you go. The colors are coming through crazily and the amount of detail is really just... It, it's uh, it's really over the top. So um, there I am at 25. Looks pretty nice, to be honest. So that's the power of layers, and that's another way that I like to use layers. Okay, and as I said, I used the this layer, adjustment layer two, to isolate the grasses and that warm tone and a little bit of detail to kind of pop that section of the photo. But the last thing that I really feel like I need to do here is adjust the sky. So I went in and I created a new layer, and this was an adjustment layer. And what I did is I went in with a mask and I set a gradient mask and then I dropped it into the sky. But here's the thing, a gradient mask by definition has a straight line on the horizon. You can change the amount of gradient, but the line is always gonna be straight. So after I applied the gradient mask, I went back to edit mask and clicked on brush. And then I, I can show you what I did. I clicked on erase and then I kind of erased some of the gradient mask where it came in on top of these areas. So all you do is you just say erase, get your brush whatever size you want it to be, and you can just come in here and kind of erase some of that mask from the areas where you don't want it to apply. Again, a gradient mask is a straight line. It's very rare you're gonna have a perfectly straight line like on a horizon. I did not here, so I kind of tilted the gradient mask. I brought it down. The line was kind of going diagonally across here. Um, I expanded the gradient zone, and I've got a video about gradient masking if you want to see that to better understand that. But um, And then I came in to edit mask, grab the brush, because you can go in with a brush mask and edit your luminosity mask or your gradient mask or your radial mask. And so that's the power of uh, the masking feature in Luminar is you can go edit one of those other kind of masks. Anyway, I edited that, took it out of the mountain because I didn't want it to apply there. I just wanted to isolate the sky, and that's what's happened now. I've got a mask specific to the sky. Now I'm gonna go make the adjustments to the sky because I masked that in at the layer level. So every adjustment I make on this layer is only gonna apply in the sky. Also, I wanna point out the black and white that you see here. The white represents the area where you've painted in. That's gonna show the edits that you make, and the black is the areas where you've not painted it in or maybe you've erased it from that is gonna hide the stuff that you do. So the common term for this is that black conceals and white reveals. So the white is revealing my edits, it's showing my edits. Black is concealing or hiding my edits. So just keep that in mind. It's a good little um, mental trick to keep, uh, you know, to keep uh, top of mind. Okay, so first thing I did is start messing in the light tool. And of course I can't turn that one on and off. So you can see I warmed up the temperature and the tint took down the exposure. Again, it's just applying to the sky. I've erased it from uh, this, uh, this mountain or hill, and it's not applying to anything really below the horizon line. Uh, so took down the exposure, added some contrast, removed or de uh, decreased highlights, that sort of thing. I don't think I did, yeah, I did nothing in the advanced settings. So, so far the light tool has gotten me from that sky, a little bit bluer, a little bit brighter, and a little bit more blown out, to this one, a little warmer, a little darker. Okay, next thing I did is I go to Landscape Enhancer, and here I just hit it with Golden Hour. Now keep in mind, I'm just, I don't want any more gold in the lower half of the frame. I did that on the previous layer, and I've got the gold warm tones across the grasses, 
looking just the way I want it to look. Here, golden hour is going just in the sky. Remember, we're just in the sky because I masked in specifically for the layer to only apply to the sky. So before golden hour and after golden hour, it's not a massive change, uh, but it does apply just to the sky, which I kind of like. And while I'm at it, a nice thing that I like to do, this guy doesn't really need it, but you can come in and apply structure. In this case, I would probably go negative because I like smooth skies. Maybe do that, maybe do a little boost, and it just kind of smooths out the sky. This one doesn't really have any texture in it because it is just um, a pretty uh, a blank sky. I mean, there's really no clouds, and there frankly wasn't a lot of color to begin with. You can see the before and the after. In fact, it's kind of blown out. We've come a long way, but that's a, another thing you could do if you wanted or needed to. I don't really need it here, but it kind of works, so I'll just leave it. Um, but that's how I isolated that layer for sky. But then here's the other thing I did. I changed the blend mode to color. So let me show you the normal blend mode, which is what's going to be the default. The sky looked like that. It was actually quite a bit darker. So I just came in and started playing with blend modes, and I landed on color, and I just thought it blended together really well. Blend modes, all they do is they tell the layer that you're on how to blend and interact with the layer below them. Now, I, I highly recommend if you want to get into blend modes, there's a whole lot there. I got to be honest, it's kind of confusing. I'm no expert in it. I use them some. I used it in this photo. I use it maybe 10% of the time. Um, so I'm not going to try to explain to you how they all work. I recommend looking for other YouTube videos or reading on some photography websites. It's been covered uh, quite a bit by people that know it better than I do. The point is, in this case, it came in very well um, and handy for me. And that's another thing to think about is layers give you the ability to use blend modes, right? So that comes in pretty handy because you saw the normal blend mode, which is going to be the default. The sky didn't look that great. Kind of dark, kind of, I mean, it's, it's just, it doesn't really work for the photo. And I was still playing with it. And then when I got to color, I thought, it softens the tones. It just looks much better. So that was my final step was just playing with the blend mode. So that's an example of how I use layers. I hope that you find this helpful. If you want to look at the before and after, um, it's, it's quite a difference in the photo. And truthfully, it's probably a little bit saturated and overdone for my taste um, and maybe yours as well. And that's okay. It's not so much. Here's the editing steps to get this photo looking awesome. It's more so here's how I used layers to get uh, to isolate different sections of the photo and make the edits that I wanted to make. So one more time before and after. I'll do some more layers videos. If you have questions, leave them down below and I'll keep hitting on that topic. Um, they're very powerful. It's a wonderful feature of Luminar. It's one of the first things that I loved about the first version of Luminar that I got several years ago was it had layers and uh, otherwise I used to have to go to Photoshop and places for that and admittedly I didn't do it a lot because I just didn't like Photoshop. So I use them um, a fair amount, not a ton in Luminar, but they're here, they're easy, and they're powerful. That's it for today, my friends. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.